the mind at work is in fact the only thing that is at work <coughs> if you take all the minds out of any organization you have nothing so design, especially design for buildings where people are going to work or where they're going to study where they're going to be has to take into consideration what the brain is I am fortunate in that my own father was an electrical engineer who specialized in lighting and also in building houses so as a boy I was in brain friendly environments that my father actually made for me, my mum, my brother so when someone is designing a building it's, it's important to design the beauty of it primarily if it's going to be a building for human beings the brain and the body it has to take in especially the senses there is a uh, global illness at the moment called building sickness and um, what does that mean? it means that people are living in buildings that are not appealing to their senses that are not visually exciting or stimulating that are somehow humming at a single tone which is monotonous which is monotonous which puts the brain into a, a dead state so many people going to work have the attitude partly because of the design of the building that it's not important that it's somehow prison-like that it's grey that it's not it's not relevant to them their lives their senses their feelings their emotions and their ability to think because the brain thinks with all its senses so the buildings of the future the buildings of the 21st century which by the way has been called the century of the brain and we are now living in the officially declared age of intelligence they have to be intelligent buildings now that is a current if you like architectural phrase but those buildings that are called intelligent are themselves intelligent so they've got computers and they've got contact and they've got communication etc but a really intelligent building is a building that allows the flower of human intelligence to flourish and express itself and create and perform in the way that it's designed to do so the mental set of the people within the organizations within the buildings is going to be in major ways influenced by the design of that building I mean think yourself if you go into a building and it's dull it's monotonous what does your brain immediately set itself to it sets itself to this is pretty boring this is pretty dull I don't particularly want to be here I can't wait to finish work and get out of the building so all designers all architects need especially in this age of intelligence to consider the brain and the body that is in that building the multiple intelligences include the physical intelligence and physical requires a building in which the body can again flourish express itself remain and be healthy one of the interesting ironies in modern buildings is that the people within the building are being told to think outside the box and what are they living in? a little cubicle box after box after box after box so in order to encourage creativity and team spirit you know, the esprit de corps of the company, of the team, of the people the building has to facilitate that and not only facilitate but actually encourage so I commend that in all buildings there be a brain room a, an intelligence room where people can go to think, to create and where there will be materials to help them do that one of the brain's main stimuli is color so color needs to be very carefully designed within the building with modern technology and my father 40 years ago was already playing with this you can change the color of anything and so if the individual within the building or his or her office had the capacity to change the colors within their own environment it would be extremely stimulating 
to all forms of thought the brain thinks best and this is important to know when it is relaxing and when it is in solitude so buildings need to have if the leaders want people in the buildings to think which hopefully they do buildings need to have areas where people can relax where they can rest where they can be in solitude because it's in those situations that the big breakthrough thinking actually happens the environment as B.F. Skinner mentioned many many decades ago is vital to the happiness the health the creativity and the productivity of the individuals within that environment so you the designers you the architects in one way are the shepherds and guides of human intelligence pretty important job needs to be done very well in the, in the modern context the leader is a brain leading other brains and therefore that leader has to do things that the other brains need the, the qualities of a leader include someone who uses all of the multiple intelligences so someone who is verbally numerically creatively personally socially spatially ethically spiritually intelligent and that's just part of it the leader also needs to have certain qualities <clears throat> one of those the first is a vision a leader has to give you the individual the vision to follow and the vision has to be a good one the leader has to be committed to that and enabling the team also to be committed the leader has to have faith that the leader can accomplish that vision not only faith in him or herself but faith that the team can do that if that faith at all wavers the team disintegrates it has to be a total commitment the leader has to have tremendous ability to imagine to create images within the mind to assist the vision and also to help with short medium long term planning the leader has to be energetic if I'm your leader and I'm talking to you like this saying the buildings have better be pretty good for the future and well we better make them okay for the human brain and the body you're not going to follow me at all I have to give you the energy the passion of my belief in that particular goal I also have to be to be able to learn and learn from mistakes if I make a mistake as your leader I have to say ah, just made a mistake let's learn from it and quickly move on get back on track to the vision the leader also and I could go on for another five hours on this but the leader also has to be persistent when you the leader or the team fail what you do is you check the error you learn from it you pick up whatever the mess is and you try again and if you get knocked down again you try again persistence is the key 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 word and what that means is that the division is absolute and so if you get blocked you will find a way over it and if that gets blocked you find a way around it if that gets blocked you find a way through it if that gets blocked you find another way around it so you always find a solution you always go for the vision you are always persistent and it was nicely summed up by the the most productive inventor of the last 400 years Thomas Edison 